Hello everybody, my name is Salo. Welcome back to the series where we're dealing with Flutter programming. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about, we're going to be simplifying web sockets using Flutter. We're going to be connecting to an echo server using a web socket and we're going to uh, send data and then receive that back. This is what the output is going to be looking like. I'm going to be sending a message. Yeah, you see, this is what that works like. Uh, so I send a message, that message comes back to me via an echo server. We're going to be looking at how we can achieve something uh, similar via Flutter programming. Uh, so again, this is going to be a very simple code, like how it is for most of our series. I'm only going to be showing you what is required to achieve something like this, to get this functionality working and to understand what's going on with all of that. So without any further ado, let's start. Let's start always by deleting all of the stuff and start with the imports. So two imports you're going to be uh, knowing for this particular application. One is obviously material dot dot. That is common uh, across all Flutter codes. The other one, however, is called web socket channel. That's the name of the package. And we're going to be importing web socket channel dot dot. And the reason we have this is we're going to be using a class called web socket channel. And we're going to be connecting to the echo server that we just had. Okay. Um, so that is very simple. And the next part is going to be, um, look, one is going to be a form. Okay. Because we're getting this input via a form, right? So whether you guys watch the form video or not, anyways, we're going to be having a form key so that we can validate this form. And by validating, we're not only, we're not going to actually validate a lot of stuff. We're just going to have a dummy validation so that we can get this input via a form by and send this during the validation. Okay, that's what we're trying to do here, basically. Um, so after which we're going to be having the void main function, which is the same as is always is. We're going to be having a stateful widget because we're going to be uh, sending different messages. And after the send, the state changes and you get that information back to the user, right? Therefore, we're going to be creating a stateful widget. So STFUL, click the enter button, call this home because we're referring to this widget right here. Up to this, if it's clear, then it's fantastic. Let's move ahead and let's actually define uh, this channel, this web socket that we're going to be connecting to. Okay, so let's create a final variable. Let's call this channel. This will be the web socket channel that we're going to be connecting to, and that will be using the web socket channel. Yeah, this will be that, and then using the connect function, we're going to be um, connecting to WSS, uh, this is what it is, slash, wait, slash, echo dot, sorry, websocket dot org. Okay, very, very simple URL. Of course, we can't pass this as is because the string is not really passed as an URI. Therefore, we have to wrap this with another function, URI dot parse, and then pass all of this as a parameter. Okay, works. And then we can go ahead and close this. That's it. Our channel is something that we're going to be. We have declared. Okay. Now there's some stuff that we also need, but before that, let's uh, go ahead and build the uh, UI. So if I just save this right now, you can see that only a placeholder will be there. So let's replace um, this placeholder with a scaffold. So I'm going to just start a scaffold here. Um, and in the body, maybe we can have uh, an app, app bar. That's up to you. If you want to create one, create one. In this case, let's just skip the app bar and then go with the form itself. Uh, and let's go ahead and start with the key. So for form key, that is something that we have declared already. So we can just set this to this one right here. Okay, this should be capital K. Uh, the name parameter child is required. Okay, that's something that we're going to be adding in anyways. That's not a problem. Uh, so the child, let's add a column so that we can add multiple children. Right, because we have one uh, text box over there and input and below that we have also have the send button. So therefore we'll have children itself. So the children will be um, a text form field, first of all, correct? Because we're gonna be getting that input, uh, something that we saw. And obviously when you're having a text form field, you're gonna be having a validator, correct? So this validator is where we're going to be sending stuff. Actually, let me just give this as an empty function. Maybe uh, I'll create a function called nothing for now. So void nothing. And then this will just do nothing. And I'll add this as the uh, function that we're sending so that on validation, it sends stuff to the server. Okay. Uh, now validator should a uh, void function can't be assigned to the parameter, right? Uh, so this should be now uh, we need to take a parameter as the string that is in this text form field. Therefore, we have to add this right here, st, uh, and this should hopefully go away. And maybe this should also return a string, I think. Yeah, 
that goes through for now let's just keep this nothing as is, as it is we'll move ahead with the rest and then we'll come back to this okay now we can also add a decoration uh so maybe if i save this now we can see what this actually looks like for now you can see that you have the text over here maybe we'll add a placeholder for this also um there let's just go ahead and go to the decoration there let's go ahead with an input decorator also decoration and then the label will be nothing but a text there uh enter message to send something like that okay so if i save this you can see that we get the decorator the text form field that we're sending is done which is awesome okay below which i'm going to be creating an elevated button right so i'll have an elevated button uh and inside that button first of all the child will be text saying send right and then uh on press let's validate this form okay so valid maybe this this will also be another function that we have to define so that we'll just go ahead and put over here so void valid let that let's just keep that empty uh for now we have to get rid of this uh yeah and then once we are done yeah we have this send button also functionality yet to be implemented but i am something i'm saying is there's no not enough space over here so let's just go ahead and create a sized box and set that to maybe something like 100 and once that is done you can see that there is some space okay i have to set this height to be 100 correct ah yeah there's some gap here which is awesome maybe we can also create an app bar app bar title we can just set this so some text we can set this to a web socket demo okay awesome if you yeah i think this will be enough maybe we can set the center title attribute to be true also so that this comes over here awesome now look wise i am satisfied with all of this let's go ahead with the functionality then we'll come back because we have to display stuff so we're not done with all these widgets we have to add one thing more but before that let's go ahead and implement the functionality first uh, for this valid function it's going to be very very simple what we're going to be doing is we're going to take this form key right and then we're going to take its current state assert that to not be null and then just do the validate function okay that's it we've not added any validators uh, much so that should be good here the validator is nothing let's uh, change this to send which should be our function to send data uh, to the websocket correct so what this will do is we have our websocket channel already so there'll be a sync to that sync just add whatever string that we're getting here that will be st correct and then just return none. okay this will this will only be the sending function now once it's received that'll be another function but we'll write that function also don't worry um so yeah this should be good now if i'm just sending some values you can see i don't know whether it's sent or not and i'm not receiving that also right so for an echo server receiving is very very important therefore i'm going to go ahead and maybe i'll create another size box so that uh, all of this is arranged properly okay uh, but i'll go ahead and add a stream builder okay so i'm going to add the exp uh, expanded widget first of all so that i can take the area properly uh, and in the child i'm actually going to go ahead and add a stream builder so that's something that you guys would have been knowing already so i'm just gonna yeah there i'm gonna the stream is what i'm gonna give our channel okay so channel dot stream that'll be our echo uh, echo servers channel uh, via the web socket that's we have, that's what we've been creating here but apart from that you also need a builder so that will uh, display a lot of stuff that's why it should be expanded but ideally we're only sending one message so the expander is not needed but i'm just going to do that anyways so now the builder will be nothing uh, you're going to give a context and a snapshot correct uh, again common stuff okay maybe yeah inside this function we have to return some text correct so let's just return text of our snapshot dot has data if it has data and if it does not have data okay so snapshot will be whatever we're getting back from the server correct um, and if you get data from it let's just go ahead and display the data itself so that will be snapshot dot data and if you don't get anything again this is a ternary operator something that we've discussed in this series already if you don't get anything just go ahead and display null okay so if we go ahead and close this out also uh this should be it if for example let's just test this out testing i send this back um and you should be yeah you can see that you get testing back that's it it works successfully uh this test is successful i can test this again so what is happening basically is this is sending to the echo server and you will get data back okay 
this is it very very simple i hope you're able to understand to summarize what you've done here creating the websocket channel connecting to it yes going ahead uh, with our gui now here we are approaching this like a form so create a text form field for its validator send stuff to this channel correct then what we're doing we're creating uh, a button which just validates this form which is calling this validator function correct then we are building a stream builder where we are going to this echo again this echo server socket so once we send data we'll also receive data we're saying if it receives data go ahead and create a stream builder where just return this data if there is data return it if there's no data just return something empty okay again this expanded will not be something that you require really uh, if you're dealing with multiple lines maybe in that case it'll be required but anyways i'm going to do that right here I hope you're able to understand what we're talking about in this video about WebSockets in Flutter. If this video helped you, hit that like button. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. I'll try my best at answering them. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in another video. Until then, bye.